Good to see everybody here this evening, or afternoon, I should say. Um, okay, well, let's see. I could find minutes of June, June 27th. Um, I could not find minutes of June 6th or July 6th. Well, I, I sent them to everybody, but... I did not get 27th. The, the three that I got were all the 27. I, I can easily create some minutes. For, did you get? I well, got. I got them all in the same. Email, I don't you what? I have to have an extra copy. You got them all. Why are you? No, it's oh. all right. All right. Well, you, and yeah, I sent them, but Marilyn got them. Um, Don, I, I only I, have I, ones I on my a, desk. Right. Well, you were going to come back in an hour when you left earlier. So Marilyn, which, which ones have you read? Um, all of them. Okay. May I scan 27 right now? Uh, yeah. There's, there's five agendas right there. Okay. Um, so you guys are waiting for um, these. Well, I'm comfortable with you proceeding. Don't, don't worry. Okay, if that's the case, because I have read the 27th. And I've read, I've read 26. I have all the minutes. You want to? I've read 6th. I've read the two sixths. Okay, and July 6th. And June 6th. And I had no changes. <coughs> all right, I would entertain a motion six, to... Uh, Adapt minutes of June 6th. I should move. I saw one. Oh, how does that order go? June 6th. Um, it has been moved. Is it second? Well, second and then we have to say. And then discussion. Yeah, yeah, discussion. But I second. There's an echo. Uh, we have a motion and a second. We've heard a discussion regarding June 6th minutes. I'm not Did you just say you had something? I'm not seeing it now, but I saw the mistake. Um, oh yes, audience member Steve Weary commented about these yay, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it, everything looks great until it said, Weary requests if he requests a variance in the future that Ms. Probeck be recused from that hearing. And I think what you actually said was Ms. Aker. I said it would likely that Ms. Aker would have to do this. Excuse me? I said it would be likely that she would need to. But it was not Quebec, it was Aker. Aker. So. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> what line is that, please? It's the second, back the second page, about as far down. The bottom of the third. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, anything else? Nothing. Hearing nothing else further, may we vote please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Beecher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. I have no entertain a motion to adopt minutes of June 27th. Is there a motion? Yes, I will. I'll second. Any further discussion regarding June 27 minutes? I have a couple. Um, second page, uh, we're not quite halfway down. Long time MTFR member Ted Wasserman, blah, 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 blah. Trust me, Joe Hollister both ex uh, expressed concerns that the levy could not possible type of Oh, pass. Not, yeah, take the possible out, right? Yeah. And then the next paragraph, mm -hmm. motion to house for a second, Mr. Reacher, uh, made to authorize resolution 2225, resolution of necessity. I don't think it was the resolution of necessity. It wasn't the, it, the resolution to proceed. Yeah. Huh. Good on What did I say? Okay. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I see that, I see that over there. Okay. We got right, the same page, as it were. I want to make sure. 
um, yeah, that I wasn't I wasn't here for that meeting, so I think sure my name wasn't on it. I probably shouldn't make any comments. Okay. Well, you can see clerical errors. Yeah. Hearing nothing oh, else, maybe. Oh, wait, 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 wait.
so. Yeah, they just discuss separately. Uh, email from me or website creator, the uh, Glenmore Cemetery, July Ohio Business Gateway newsletter, Green County Safety Council information regarding the Safety Council and Safety Council. Email from Village Director, Public Works Transform, uh, Transform and then Forest Cemetery. Uh, you've already talked about my request for that. He was just saying, yes, they will do it. Uh, we have to pay for some part of the Transformer, but they won't put it in for us. Fund status, revenue status, appropriation status. Can put that under some category? Because I'm remembering a, a well amount of transformer. Okay, uh, we can put that under some category, certainly. Uh, I don't know, maybe we Yeah, I'm not looking Any further correspondence in or out this period? Um, we've got a, um, Uh, public comment on the agenda item. Anybody here from the public? Anybody here wish to speak on an agenda item from the public? I have a question on zoning. Okay, speak now. Mm -hmm. We'll have a hold the piece. Uh, I'm just curious what the status is of the uh, proposal to eliminate the uh, Section 18 temporary use provision. It's being reviewed by Regional Plan. What's that mean? One of the steps in making a, any amendment to the zoning code is, is giving it to regional planning to review and make their recommendation. Is that a public process or is it a meeting or is it just a couple guys getting together? Or? It's public. Okay. When, when is that? Um, one of them, the executive committee meeting, is tomorrow afternoon at 1 30. The commission meeting is a week from tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m should be on the agenda for both of them. It just depends upon what happens tomorrow. Yeah, yeah I got an email. We got the emails. We got the email saying that uh, they get some kind of review from the prosecutor's office and they haven't gotten a response yet. It, it may not be on the executive oh. agenda. I had a conversation that maybe it just got to the prosecutor and the agenda's full, so it won't make it until August. Um, well, that's breaking news. Mm -hmm. And then, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess it goes to the executive committee, mm -hmm. and then to the general board. Mm -hmm. And then back and to then the zoning. And then it makes it to them. Uh, goes back to us. Staff it makes goes it back to the day she goes to the, the executive board. Oh, thank you. There's one more step. Okay. I'm the chairman of the executive committee and the region. I might as well tell us what we're doing. <laughs> But thank you, Richard, for your help. Well, I Thanks come, for coming tonight. Twelve days wait, but you know, better wait. So it is voted on the executive committee, goes to the full commission, is voted on the full commission for uh, approval or disapproval of the, whatever the project or whatever the question is. It then goes back to the zoning commission with that recommendation. The zoning commission, Our zoning commission. Yeah. The zoning commission then has a public meeting uh, regarding that, that change. We're going to review the recommendation and make a public comment what happens then. And at that point, it will, if they pass it, if they still can be, if the zoning commission still wishes to pass it, it then comes to us. In which case, we have a public, a public meeting and then have 30 days to decide whether to ask for or modify or reject it. Um, and your executive committee meetings are like second something or something? They are tomorrow at 1.30. Which is a Tuesday, mm -hmm. first two, second Tuesday of the month? Mm -hmm. so, second Tuesday of the month. So this would be not until August second Tuesday. Correct. Okay. Okay. That would go through exactly August 2nd, Tuesday, and then commission the following Tuesday, the third Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Let's, let me emphasize, yeah, one, clarify that the County Planning Commission is advisory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything so, you'd like to add, Richard? No, then. Yeah, they are advisory, but their advice is mandated. In other words, you have, you have to get their advice. You don't have to follow it, but you have to 
Okay. Yeah. And both our zoning commission meeting and then the public process after that are obviously ours is public, and yours is public. Obviously. Yeah, they're all public. And they're all the whole process is public. Mm -hmm. And advertised. No, I don't think that the regional planning advertises their agenda in, in, like we advertise public hearings. Every our public meetings. Yeah, the, the meetings are advertised. Oh, yeah, they're advertised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no, I can find those anywhere, so no, I'll learn by it. Just make sure I got it correct. Okay, anything else? Mm -hmm. Steve, anything else? Where are the web uh, On the county website, on the regional plan. I'll go back and look. I didn't see them. I'm just curious how they join or attend. Uh -huh. Is the exec and the regular commission meeting open to public? Yes. Or okay. In person or virtual? Or, you know? mm, I'm not, it has been virtual up, up to now. I'm not sure where they're still doing it. I just can't confirm that because okay. I questions called them directly. Yeah. When is the public hearing? Again, I, I understand the executive uh, meeting is tomorrow, but the public hearing, when is that? Okay. That's the, whole, the whole thing has been, had, had been put off for a month. So the public hearing hasn't been set because it hasn't gone through any of the procedural meetings, hearings yet. It has to go through the executive committee hearing, has to go through the full commission hearing, has to go back to the, to the Yellow Springs, or the... Miami Township Zoning Commission, and then may or may not have a hearing set depending upon what their decision is. And then come to us for a hearing. So none of that's been set yet. So the first two meetings are Green County. Sure. Before they even tell us if we have to have a meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's, it's part of the process. The Zoning Commission then takes into account what they have yes. to say yes. and proceeds to stick with what they said if even if they disagree or if they agree, move ahead and talk to have a public hearing. Um, it, it all depends on what comes back to me in the plan. Okay. Any other questions, Steve? <coughs> Anybody else? No, I think clear. Thanks. Okay. Um, we're now to fire department report. Is there anybody here who's representing the fire department? <laughs> Just a little old man. <laughs> um, all right. Would you like to introduce yourself for the members of the, of the sure. body of hand? I, and I, the, I, the body of hand, yes. Uh, Denny Powell, assistant chief. Uh, um, can you say that again? I'm sorry. Denny Powell, assistant chief. He was just hired last week. So yeah, just last week. Right? Spends a lot. Been here for 20 years. Right? You, uh, you can't joke with 30. <laughs> you can't joke with a new reporter. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just started last week, huh? Yeah, right, just last week. Uh, so during, since the last meeting, we've had 31 EMS calls. Two of those were in Bath Township. Uh, 21 fire calls, none of those were in Bath Township. Um, outside of that, I'll comment that we've had a lot of lift assists lately um, to, I think, to honestly, to an extent, with so many repeat offenders that being mandatory reporters, we're doing social service referrals to help. You mean lift services. off the floor sort of thing? Okay, okay. not put yeah. on your high dollar list. No, 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 no. Okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, those are pretty concerning because that's, you know, somebody falls down the stairs, breaks the hip, whatever, who knows how long they're going to be down the floor. Right. And just a lot of repeats, obviously, is a massive red flag for us, so we're, we're really trying to, to to deal with that. Fortunately, the you know, Adult Protective Services in the county, uh, you know, they do an amazing job getting in, so hopefully we'll see some resolution or something that call like that, because that's been unbelievable in the last two weeks. Uh, obviously, Colin is not here. He is at the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association meeting in Columbus. He'll be back in town probably around three or so on Friday. Um, we had an event, uh, the Epilepsy Foundation Mud Volleyball event on Sat last Saturday, this is the 17th year that we provided first aid for, for that charity event. And I usually send eight or ten people that are volunteering their time for it because they like to play mud, I guess. Um, Anybody eat too much mud this year? I haven't heard that, and I haven't heard a whole lot of things about uh, any horrific injuries because sometimes mm -hmm. they have some pretty bad ones. Mm -hmm. Apparently, mud and beer mix really well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we do have a couple of things as far as purchases go. Uh, we did replace two of our thermal imaging cameras with a, a less expensive FLIR model that'll meet our needs. Those were actually priced at $1,500 for the pair, which is unbelievably inexpensive. Normally we're talking about closer to conservatively about $3,500 a piece. Um, Who remembers? What we paid for this one for the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, do you remember what you paid for the first one? Oh no, that was before you actually. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Before before was before. Was no, that was that was that was before her. <laughs> do you remember? Yeah. It was either twenty four or five or twenty five. Yes, twenty four twenty four and change, yeah. 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 <laughs> Technology's come a long way. That was a big pill to swallow. Yeah. And it was a big device. Yes, too. it was. Yeah. Uh, these are, you know, a tiny little handheld thing. They're, they're something. Not quite as quick as ones that'd be more expensive in terms of, you know, moving an image mm -hmm. around. But it, it, heck, for that price, you can't beat the mm -hmm. um, We did get a quote. Um, our multi gas meter, and just if you're not aware of what that does, it checks for fungal liquid oxygen level, carbon dioxide, all of those kind of things uh, in emergencies has finally gone to put. Um, so we were able to get three different quotes to replace that with a multi-gas unit that is pretty much what everybody, including uh, our local gas utility is using. That was 27.13 and 20 cents. So we're recommending that you guys authorize the purchase of that because um, it is, we have to have it no operational way not to have it. Uh, and that's, that's a pretty comparable price. Uh, and then advantages of it is, um, in addition to its capability with it being something that everybody uses, it makes it much easier for us to calibrate and do the annual calibrations and the six month calibrations that are required. Because everybody basically has got gas around to do the calibration and share it. So it's a, it's a uh, better way for us to, to head, head that direction. Uh, unfortunately, the typical thing with those kind of things, they're like your cell phone where they have batteries that you can't change them and you just wait till the batteries go and that's it. So that's the situation where we're in action with those and the tip. Uh, take a breath, I've entertained a motion for, for the purchase of both of these items that uh, were just presented to us. I'm sorry, is there a uh, so I didn't realize he's asking for that. I thought I he was saying, oh, to purchase okay. these two items. Okay. Uh, so I moved. I second. Any further discussion regarding them? <clears throat> Hearing none, maybe vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Thank you all. Assistant Chief, continue, please. So we had a uh, pretty lengthy rope rescue class. Uh, started out at the basic level. Uh, through the technician class, uh, we had, or, I'm sorry, the awareness level, which covered, I forget exactly how many people were in that, around a dozen or so, which basically just allows them to function around when we're doing things like rope rescues in the, in the parks and whatnot. And then we had 10 additional members who were certified at the technician level, which are the people who actually are doing the hall and setting the systems and whatnot. So we were a bit long overdue on, on doing that, so it's definitely nice to have 10 of our members. Oh yeah, these are all, yeah, these are all our, our yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Colin sent me a text message a little after I typed this up, but um, Mindy, the uh, uh, Green County Central Communications Dispatch Coordinator was able to, she convinced the uh, county uh, officials to use some of their ARPA funds to help uh, replace tornado sirens. Those sirens that will be replaced, number one, Clifton, which is probably World War II era. It's very, very old. Cedarville is Jamestown and Spring Valley, so we're, we'll be on the hook for maintenance of them, but outside of that, uh, I don't know what unit they are actually purchasing, but I can guarantee it's over twelve or $25,000. Uh, so they're quite expensive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, let's see, you guys got all the expenditures. And then uh, Lieutenant Paletti and myself went to an advanced stroke life support course. 
this is a new discipline that the American Heart Association is adding, so I jump through the administrative hoops to add that officially to our training center. Great. Um, so that's us teaching all of those. So advanced stroke life support, the gist of that program is to, to emphasize uh, improved stroke training, improved stroke recognition, and it's a pre-hospital and a hospital training course, and we are the only treat, training center in the Miami Valley that will be able to, to provide that training. So I'm pretty excited about that. We expect to have educational materials sometime probably towards the end of July, hopefully depending on when the age of the releases is. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And that is all I got. Since recruiting him, is that recruiter for firefighters and volunteers? Yeah, yeah, it's in pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's a monthly ad. It's in one out of every four issues. I give. Why did the Kevin Klein need to purchase a grill from the Grain Bin Rescue Auger? So on the um, <clears throat> on the Grain Bin that uh, auger that was donated to us, um, which I, I honestly I don't remember exactly how that all transpired because it was a, a while ago now. Um, we were required to buy a battery operated drill specifically for that that runs the auger to evacuate the grain. Apparently that was something that our on-tens purposes overlooked. So he found this this drill is actually around a $400 price range. Uh, bought it actually where his wife works and also got a 10% discount on top of it. But it's got to be a certain caliber and class of drill. So the Granger prices on that that they were finding were around 400 which I think is kind of so that's what that's, that's about. Why? I assume we have the auger to practice somebody getting their hand caught in it. What, what no, no, it's for it? it's for a, a grain bin. So if yeah. you have a farmer who's got grain in a bin, yeah. they get stuck in it. This auger will help to evacuate that grain so that you can affect oh, the rest. This is not an internal auger no. through the right for the grain bin to auger no. grain into no. it. No, it's a device that it, we don't keep it on our apparatus because it's so large. I mean, it's yeah. like this, this, but it's, 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 so it sits at the end of the apparatus bay. So if we get a call where that's any potential, then we just grab it and toss it on the respective mm -hmm. truck. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. I had my auger. But, well, it's nice. We didn't pay for it. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. we, paid for it. we paid for the drill, but the auger is like $4,500. Where did you get the auger? Um, it was part of a grant that was funded that originally Spring Valley was going to take ownership of the auger mm -hmm. and Spring Valley Township Fire felt that it was more appropriate when they started counting the number of grain bins in the county. We have by far most of them. Is that right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, the death that would be, I'd be interested in the detail of that, but not right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's... Yeah, Anything else for fire? Uh, uh, last meeting there was no report, and I like to have on record <coughs> how many runs. So if you could uh, figure that out, Colin said it was like think, a last minute. Yeah, too many calls. It's not a big deal for me to count them, but I don't know if I'll stop my head. No, I know, but it, it would be nice to have it written down and we can enter it in the minutes next time. Yeah, so I'll ask him about the report from the previous meeting. Because that I haven't even seen myself. So. <clears throat> uh, and I've heard that there are different periods when our department has made significant money, uh, money training. Mm -hmm. uh, what what's the prospect of that? Most of these training sessions, I assume, are free. Or uh, I'm not. What I guess I'd have to ask. What training sessions do you mean? Uh, Talking about fire, firefighter level one or EMT oh, basic. Or those are those are never run at. We don't make profits off of those when we do those because those are those are done under the auspices of Clark State. So Clark State is making the money off those, not, not Have us. there been years when we've made 
over $50,000 from training. If you're talking about AHA courses, then... Anything. Yes. Any training. Yes, I would say AHA courses, yeah. And is there a prospect of that in the future? That is hit or miss. It's totally down on demand, and this year it's down pretty substantially because of COVID. Uh, but those are when, you know, where we'll do skill training sessions for, say, DLS, basic life support, CPR, ACLS, eventually this ASLS course, those. And so, you know, those are all courses that, for example, our staff are required to have, but depending on where the other health professionals work, so say a physician, an RN, or whatever, they're required to have those trainings uh, for their job as well. And there's been much more emphasis over the years. Those were traditionally more face-to-face -face courses, and now they're more of an online class, and you come in for a practice session and a skill verification on those. And typically, those are done more on an individual basis rather than a group thing. So there's profit involved in there because we're paying for we're paying for our instructors, all the materials, all that stuff in there. But the other classes, yeah, we're not like the rope rescue class, for example, that's our own internal training. We're certainly not making the other, any money off of that. Uh, but that makes sense. I'm just fishing for opportunity of making more money. You had asked Colin this question once, and I'm trying to remember his answer. It's something about how community colleges have really gotten into the game of trainings in the last. It, I, I mean, it used to be when when I when I ran the the public safety program at the Career Center. Um, you know, the Career Center was in a position where uh, you know there was more emphasis on getting the training available just to support the fire departments and EMS. And now at the college level, it's it, you know, in other words, Career Center wasn't necessarily trying to make any money off of it which benefited us in keeping our costs down. That's not necessarily the case for community colleges. Uh, and we were paying significantly more for that training than what we would have. Um, so kind of honestly, in a way, a lot of respect, some of this stuff does end up benefiting our own internal training. And then uh, all the AHA courses that have been mentioned are classes that all of our people have to have. Well, they're not paying for that training. We need the cost of that because it's our uh, but realistically, I'd say there there are not necessarily any other courses right now that we would be doing where we would necessarily make money. Um, if we offer some other classes, like say fire officer courses or something like that, those are typically where we don't charge. We might offer those classes, another agency might offer those classes, and we send our people to them and back and forth. And it's just more of a handshake of we're just helping each other out for the better better of the county. And then there's not money involved. Is this fifty thousand figure? Is this gross or net? I just made it up. No, I would. I would actually have to sit back with Margaret and and talk about it. But we're probably looking more at overall cost, uh, overall expenditures. Because I mean, we definitely don't lose money on the Heart Association courses. That's, right. That's what I'm sure. But I, I don't know. I, I seem to recall. That what we, Margaret might help, what we take in and what we pay out are not that far off. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it, it, I, I would definitely would not look at it being like, you know, we're rate making two for one. That my goal all along when we established that program, clear for you guys, was to say, I'm not trying to make a big profit on this because it's just not realistic. Um, and particularly the way Heart Association is doing their training now where it's, it's intended to be more individual. If I could do a group of six or eight people in a skill session and have one instructor that was able to do that, sure, I'm going to make money off of that. But that's just not how the courses are really being done now. So it's more intended of a break, almost more of a break even with obviously, a, well, I don't want to lose any money off right. of it. Yeah, that's, that's the way I understood when we put the whole thing together. Yeah. That it was could be priced out to, to at least break even, you know, cover the personnel costs and the books. And the yeah, which we definitely do that. All those yeah. materials. Yeah. Does that help? Thank you. Anything else for the fire? 
there was one other thing. Oh yeah, the Harleys. That's all right. Motorcycles. So yeah, there was the the um, the Harley ride coming through town. You know, which goes all through the the area and everything. And so we've been asked. This is the second year where they wanted to come ride through the station. I have no idea how many motorcycles we had coming through, but it's for supporting some funding or for for some fundraising for law enforcement and, and some of their beneficiaries. Uh, but we definitely had well over 100 my motorcycles. I would say probably 150, and I made the mistake of standing on the mezzanine. It's very loud. So we got kind of an angry letter about that. It wasn't an event held here. It was no. a, they're just a ride through. Oh, it literally is. It comes from Clark County all the way through. And, okay, yeah. yeah. So even if you said, well, we don't want you riding through the fire station again, they're still going down Zemi Avenue. Yep. Someone's been the same guy since then. It might have been. Um, so one of our one of our neighbor writes, I I write wondering why there was just a motorcycle rally through the township garage mahal. That's this building here. Uh, why on earth would the trustees approve such a thing? Do the neighbors not put up with enough noise already? Perplexed and pissed, Steve. P.S. I would have included Don on this note, but he hasn't bothered to get his email on the trustee website. Nice to know I was number two on that request list, but Don, I, you know, we've talked about this forever. I wish you would put your personal information, you know, your photo and your personal information. Good idea. And Keep your, forgetting. And your, you know, contact. Yeah, because I, ha I have a new trustee. Um, Email too. So my, I followed your thing, my attempt. But if, if someone that calls my office number, they get my cell phone. Okay. And anything else for? Yeah. All right. Good. In the future, I think it might be a good idea that we know that these 150 are going through here. Yeah, I don't know. I know it was, you guys were briefed on it last year, but I was not involved in the details of how it was arranged this year. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, last year it was much, it was planned out a lot more in advance, mm -hmm. and I kind of don't think that was the case this year. Um, but that could certainly be easily followed up. But that traditional, you know, that supporting other public safety people and the fundraising thing that they're doing. So historically, we've always supported yeah. some. No, I, no I, I, I don't disagree with that. Um, I'm not really sure if this letter from the Yale Spring School Board goes in old business, new business, or, or fire business, since it's specifically about the fire department. Um, uh, I would like to put it in the context of Yellow Springs Development Corporation report. You want to do it there? Okay, we can do that. Since that's coming up here directly. All right, um, Cemetery Road, uh, Mr. Kokenauer Sexton is not feeling well this afternoon, so he went home early. Um, I didn't get a chance to actually talk to him, so I didn't know if there's anything in particular that he had a problem with or I mean, I know what they're doing. They're mowing their little parts out because grass is growing like crazy. Um, but the one thing that we do have for the for the road is another one of these agreements between Green County Engineer and the Miami Township Board of Trustees for the 2022 pavement marking. As you recall, we've had this agreement for the chip seal. We've had this agreement for the for the overlay, and we're now having this agreement for the pavement marking. These are the three things that we're having done by the by the county. These are nowhere land. So, I would entertain a motion, that's a motion, to uh, enter into the agreement between the engineer and the board of trustees for the 2022 payment marking program. I so move. Another second. I have a question. Uh, without Dan here, we may not get the answer. How to the prices this year compared to last year. Couldn't tell you. 
I was pleasantly surprised on the last two processes that were, that were comparable. But I've read various jurisdictions have seen a big jump, 20, 25%. We do so little pavement marking, we probably never know the difference. Uh, I believe this is for South River Road only. I may be wrong, we may have snuck something else in there, but I think that's, anyway, I was just, that's I am, I'm interested. I'll, I'll follow up with Dan. Uh, that doesn't affect my, oh, I'm just, okay. Hearing no other comment, may we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Uh, this club is report. Currently, we have a resolution 2022 something. Oh, uh huh. I accidentally erased that. That's uh, where is it? 30. Uh, it is 30. Thank you. Do you have a copy? It is. It's yes. 30. Yes. No, I mean, that's 30. Give me mine. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, you're going to read it down there. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Whereas there's an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to these in township, now therefore the trustees authorize the following amendments. Increase contract of services by $5,000 in the general fund, and the gas tax fund uh, increase natural gas by 4000 What was the five grand for? It's, um, I was, I can't, I, I paid a bill and there wasn't enough money in there. So I am just adding more. Uh, I know, but the bill for contracted services, what was the contracted services? I don't remember right now. There's about 25 checks in there. I don't remember which one it was. I can look. No, that's right. Um, I mean, it's a pretty good sized bill, I thought maybe. No, no. The bill was not $5,000. Oh. Okay. I just I add more money in that line to right. cover the expense of the bill that I pay mm -hmm. and to have extra in there in case we have not some more contracted services like lawyers. Those want lawyers? Like, yeah, that's what Zenev a lot of it was attorney fees. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 2230? I move that we adopt resolution 2230. We have a motion. Is there a second? I will second. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Oh, I have a question. Oh, yeah, I have one. I, I, I have on my agenda that it's resolution 2022 24. That mm -hmm. Am I what? looking at something different? Amendment of permanent appropriations? Yeah, what's wrong? There's one every, practically every meeting. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. It was a kind of hairy day today. Okay. It's, it's 22, 2022-30. Okay. That's what it is, so Great. sorry about that. Thank you. I don't, I don't know. I can explain it. <laughs> oh, sorry, the clarification? That's great. Thank you. Um, oh, you want, me, you want me to call the roll? Sure. Okay. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Signature? Yes. What else? You tell me. Well, we do have a tax budget. Yeah. That I we need to approve. Please. Okay. Or if there's any discussion or changes, I did note um, um, Mr. Mutcher's um, request in the capital fund to, yeah, I don't, that, it, yeah, anyway, I made that correction on my copy. Okay. Is so um, there any other changes that we'd like to make before I submit this to the county auditor tomorrow? Done. Nope. Marilyn? I see no changes. I, 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 I'm just new and I'm curious, what is this compared to what we did at the beginning of this? What is, how is this different than our original appropriations? This, this is the budget for 2023. At the beginning of our fiscal year, we adopted appropriations for 2022 based on the budget that we set, which we didn't set because we didn't have to, and that's a whole other story, at this time last year. But had we done it at this time last year, we would have been adopting it at the first of 2022, which we did anyway without it. And we will be adopting this one as permanent appropriations next at temporary appropriations on the 1st of January and permanent appropriations before the 1st of April, 23. I think I followed that. Okay. <laughs> um, so and then I saw an email that you 
suggested, I didn't know if it was a joke or not, that you, she sent a copy to T.J. Turner. Was that humor or was that was No, that's the school that's board superintendent. I, I, he no, he's he was questioning president. our letter. He's the president. Yeah, I, I yeah, know who he is. Yeah, I just yeah, I yeah. didn't know if it was, if he would make heads or tails. But I, I see you just uh, Well, saying, I sent it to him. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. So public, public record. I, I, know, I, I did mention to him, as you can see, what I said basically, as you can see, you know, our projected budget for 2023 is in the is in the red. In the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. so that, hence our need to, you know, yeah. put a levy on the ballot. And you know, if he has any questions, he can answer. Before too long. Okay. Anything else, fiscal officer? Anything else for the sponsor? No, but ignore the fact that I put Chairperson Mr. Donald Hollister on the resolution if you have so one. Because our party been changed. Because, yeah. I got <laughs> Here, I'll sign my name. No. Okay. Wait, was that because you thought Chris wasn't going to be yeah. Correct. Until, you know. So, 10 minutes. Five minutes before the meeting. Yeah. Okay, zoning inspectors report, let's see, 12 days late. Oh, Chris? Yeah. Mr. Sop? We never had a schedule for this in the first place, but um, let's see. permits since I last met with you. Um, accessory structure um, uh, for Lori K. Watso. Um, that's on on US 68. That's um, actually the, the Dawson's old house. Oh, yes. that where construction has been going on for some time and they keep modifying what they're doing so they get new permits. Yeah. Um, an addition to a home on Harbison Road and a garage for a home on Clifton Road. Those are the permits. The the Zoning Commission meets tomorrow. They are having a public hearing on their proposed changes to the PUD chapter. Um, and as we said with the process, if, 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 the, if they don't make any changes to it, then it will be coming to you all for your review and, and enactment. It's the one that you all have read and, and, and seen before. Nothing. Nothing has changed at this point, and um, as of now, I have not had any concerns expressed about it. So that, that process may be moving along. So, I should probably read the Yellow Springs news more. Is that where the, the hearing was announced? Yeah. Did we get an email that was coming to his head? It, had, it went through Green County. Yeah, hold that. This whole, this whole, whole process is like we're talking about has, has taken place. It, this has been slow yeah. in, in, in the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, so but. I kind of wait and know when it's going to come up. What we're going to do, you know, you guys make the case that probably nobody would show for the hearing, but no, that, I'm going to make the case that. That doesn't mean we can't, we, we, we can't, we don't have the obligation to have a public you, hearing. So, as trustees, would like to be notified directly rather than through the public channel of the zoning to the public, public hearings, we can do that. Yeah, okay. Um, and then when it comes back to us, do, do we have a public hearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's that, that same thing we were talking about at the so, beginning of the meeting. Right. It's the same body, the same thing. So, and how do we, we advertise it as well in the news? Mm -hmm. do, do we invite anybody to read it or may we invite people to over. I mean, maybe if you, if you push us a little bit, we get public input. You invite anyone you'd, you'd like. Yeah, because I wasn't sure when I had this document, it's moving all around the county and everything, when I'm allowed to fish it out to people. At any, any point. Any point. Sure. This, this, this particular amendment process has been going on for years. Yeah. Okay. The, um, there, we, we actually went through the full process to eliminate, I think it was the, the commercial sections of the PUD. Mm -hmm. All right, at one point, we did that. And then 
what was left needed to be reorganized. And so that's essentially what's what's going on this time around. But there are there's there are some changes. You know, it's all a matter of opinion whether they're substantial or not. But to do those changes because well they let's see, the, the zoning commission did a set and 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 you all reviewed it and said, we don't like it. So they went back and worked on it some more. You know, did, in other words, rather than going to a public hearing and having to go through that whole process again, it was just an informal review. And members of the, of the trustees came to a zoning commission meeting. And so there was some negotiating there because it's, it's, it's foolish for the zoning commission to propose something that the trustees won't approve. My point exactly. It, there was a, I mean, it's significant to, uh, to, to say that the Zoning Commission's, at one point, there was no original proposal, uh, was to eliminate PV option completely. Mm -hmm. And the trustees said we didn't want to eliminate residential PV option. Mm -hmm. And that's what the, that was the one. That was one where where the modification was done by this body. Oh, the previous iteration of this body. Yeah, the, well, the, okay, yeah, not the, these three say, people. Was, was done by the trustees. Yes. And, and that, that, as I say, then triggered doing yeah. the rest of the work. Yeah. But it, it did modify the code. So, so anyway, tomorrow, we hope we're finally right. getting that chapter <laughs> all neat and tidy. Um, so, if Deborah Slater can find time for me when she's not working on your website, mm -hmm. um, there's no problem with us putting it like on our landing page and saying there's a good be Probably not, can't do it before tomorrow's meeting, but could do it before our meeting. There's going to be public hearing. Here's, yeah, that, here's yeah, a link. She didn't have to do that. I can put that. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's just a it's just a post. Okay. I just need to, you know, get trained how to do that. Now as I say, you're the trustees after this public hearing and let let's say nothing comes up that, that changes their mind at the public hearing, then they are more than likely to recommend the changes to you. Right? That at that point, you are it's it, it's in, it's it's your ball game. You can advertise it. I mean, you have minimum advertising you have to do, but you can encourage anybody and everybody to participate. You can distribute it any way you want. You just have a certain amount of time between the time that the zoning commission sends it to you and you schedule the public hearing. That's the RC space. Yeah, I think that's how that works. Thank you. Anything else, Richard? Um, no. Anything else for zoning? I mean, not that we haven't already gone over. I have some things to say. Yeah. I don't. No? Um, yeah. Um, oh, would so, you like me to go over your email? No, I, I, okay. I got it in my head. Um, unless you don't speak on it. So, I've gotten different answers about should we have easy laws, um, laws for both commissions. You said your reading is not mandatory, but it's a real good idea. Um, you mean bylaws? Bylaws. So sorry. Green County says, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of good, mandatory. And our and Jen Huber says, yeah, you got to have them. So um, I don't want, like I said, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. If there's a dusty copy somewhere from founding times of EZA, if anybody knows where those are. That, that, well, OK. okay. When, We'll, we'll do a, a brief history. When I became the zoning inspector, the BZA kept all their own records. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything to do yet. Um, and, but in the files here were the records of the applications for hearings. Okay? That had been kept by my, my predecessors. Um, but there, that, but nothing else having to do with the BZA. When it became clear at some point that the BZA really had, they were, they had someone designated to take minutes 
and sometimes they were taken and, and sometimes they weren't or it was a little clear. And finally I got the copies of all of those minutes and, and put them in the drawer. Um, and then we talked about how, you know, how to have minutes in, in the future of the, of the meetings. Um, and, and essentially, I've taken responsibility for that, although it depends on whether we're having a transcript or, or this or that. Um, and in the process most recently, um, in our litigious society, they're saying we really ought to have um, at least a verbal recording of every meeting. If you have a verbal recording, you can make a transcript from that, which will be considered by courts if the case goes to court. But if you only have minutes, that's not sufficient for the court to, to review. So you're saying audio recording? Audio recording at a minimum. Um, and I've actually been, been fishing around, talking to regional planning, talking to OTA, do they have any recommendations of any particular brands or styles of equipment or whatever. And um, haven't had everybody chime up and say, oh, get one of these. But working towards what, what do we need to have so that we clearly record what the, the BZA members say and what the people that are giving testimony say. And part of that depends on how the BZA runs its meeting. In other words, if the only time people speak is, is either they're a BZA member or they're at the podium, and we should have no problem getting clear recordings. But it's a little more difficult if, if someone is yelling something from the audience or, or they're trying to, you know, not taking testimony by having people come up. So we've got to work on that organization. That's how we run the meeting. I don't know if that necessarily has to be bylaws, but it probably needs to be a, a manual because the chairs of the of the PCA change from time to time. Um, so that's that's that background. So Jim, um, Jim Huber is going to send me a um, a template of what we should have, okay. and you had given him one at one time, but if it's no, okay it's I have a copy of suggested bylaws from May of 2016 that I sent out and got absolutely no response from any BZA members. Okay. So, so yeah, okay. and I had a meeting with the BZA uh, shortly after the agraria hearing to talk about procedures. Um, and, but it still ends up being talking. Uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky. I can't tell the BZA what to do. But I can try to convince them. The, our, our BZA, at least in recent years, has not had members who are particularly interested in training. We don't, we don't see most of those people at the, at the training events that are, that are available. And I don't know how we can address that to get uh, that group of people up to speed in terms of their, as you point out, their responsibilities yeah. as members of the BZA. Um, I happen to be here talking to Jen Huber, our, our, um, where is she, our counsel, mm -hmm. um, and she said, well, our office offers a two-hour or maybe a 1.5-hour BZA training on Zoom. So I'm just putting it out there. Um, she, she said they, they make it easy. And, if, and I don't know how, how to be, I don't really know. Very, okay. Um, you know, I have the list of the names and okay, the address yeah. and phone numbers and emails yeah. of the BZA members. Yeah, I can talk to them. Um, but I'll just, I'll just start with the new template and then maybe... Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy maybe, to see what Jen has. I've got Maybe we have a meeting and say, hey guys, I've already talked to Richard Silliman. I said, I don't want to make this a, a big task for a, for a volunteer group, you know. Mm -hmm. So let's just, we'll work through the first drafts and work it through run by all of us. And then if, if, you, if we formed a meeting sometime and one of us came and said, gave you some backup, like, hey guys, for real this time, we have to have one of us. <laughs> um, and here's the template. Take it home and study it and give us some feedback and then maybe yeah. Yeah, but make it for, as simple as possible for them. Well, I'm a, I'm a little concerned about that just based upon history. And things haven't changed that much, and, and I've explained this in the past, that 
many, many years ago, I wrote a pretty complete set of rules. Was that the 2016? I think, no, that, that, I think that, I was that was before, before that. that. And uh, sent them to everybody and said, if this is something that you like to adopt, uh, just let me know and, and we'll, we can do that formally. And little did I know, but Richard went behind me and told everybody not to get back with me that uh, he no, could do a lot not. better. No, I, I read the email from Rich Sullivan that quoted you as saying that, you know, telling him not to send the postcard back to me because you could do a better job than I can. You know more about zoning than I do. And so let, you know, and let you take care of it. That's not true. Well, I, well, I don't have it anymore, okay, but well, I had it for oh, many yeah, years. Well, I All right. I, I prepare, a, and that's, I think that's the copy I have here in front of me, suggested bylaws um, for their consideration. Where did the code that I sent them to them all? You sent them to them. Not, I don't have them. And, and you never said anything to anyone about those bylaws? I you can't say that I never did. Joe Stags about that? I said that I had or Rich written a set based on because I talked to Joe and Richard. Right. Okay, Rich. I can, you know, I can look through, but I don't recollect. Okay. The, the, any point, the point is, I don't that. want to have to go through this again and then have Mr. Zoff decide that he knows more than Jen Huber or Marilyn Moyer or Chris Mutcher about. Zoning bylaws. I, I think it's inappropriate to talk to Richard. I think that's exactly what he's done. We can talk about going forward. And um, yeah, and I'll get a copy from Jen Huber, and we'll, with confidence, start the process. It's not, it's not brain surgery. I mean, is no, it's not brain surgery. And uh, and as I say, there was. There was a perfectly suitable copy out there until it was, uh, yeah, until it was requested not to be adopted. So, you say your honor. <laughs> I'm just, you know, okay. I'm just saying I don't want to get into this again. Do you want BZA bylaws? Absolutely. You better get into it again. Uh, not when we have a zoning inspector who says he knows more about the BZA than I do, oh, and you know he'll write the bylaws. I haven't seen him write the bylaws yet. I don't. I'm not sure it's his responsibility to write the bylaws. I think it's. Well, I guess it's his responsibility if he told all the BZA members not to vote for my copy of the bylaws because he knows more about the zoning than I do. Chris, the BZA hasn't voted for any. I know they haven't because you convinced them not to. I, I wish I could pull a copy of the emails, but they're already yellowed in and, and, and all broken up. But I'm sorry, that's the way it was. Okay, well, let's move on. Yeah, I mean, I think the future is what I would focus on. I, I'm, I'm happy to focus on the future as long as it's not been, you know, not being um, muddled up by other people. Just I like to have a nice straight I would like to quote a, set of bylaws. I would like to quote an email that I got from Richard two weeks ago, and that was his reading of the ORC is that bylaws aren't mandatory, but he thinks they're a really good idea. So I don't think he's going to stand in our way of getting that Let's hope not. And I was the middle child, so I, I do peace making so. I was the middle child, too. Really? Uh, anything else for Richard? Yes. OK. Should be easier. It gets easier for me, Richard. Um, he told me that the Board of Zoning has their bylaws. The, the Zoning Commission. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Zoning Commission. The Zoning Commission has a set of bylaws, yes. And I they, love, they created those and they follow them, and as far as I know. I don't know how much longer I can use this excuse, but being new, where would those be? <laughs> Ask the Zoning Commission. They're their bylaws. Yeah. And, and the Zoning Commission's records are not physically stored in our office? The minutes are stored in the office. And they're in a binder on that shelf on that wall. And they are as up to date as the minutes are turned into the office. Cool. And that's not, again, that's not something that I handle. So Charles Swaney he has is the copies. current person employed. Likely he has copies of those. Um, yeah. No, he wouldn't. 
you collected a, a whole three years of them for and I, I but not went complete. to the, the, the binder in here and, and made some effort to, to establish whether this, what was there was complete. Um, the difficulty is our, our current minute taker references the, what happened at the previous meeting. Our past minute taker didn't. So you don't know if there was a meeting in any given month. And the Zoning Commission every so often has a meeting where there's not a quorum, so there is no meeting and there are no minutes. But you can't tell whether there were no minutes because there wasn't a meeting or there were no minutes because somebody, they got lost in the, um, but the, the current process is that the, the minute taker, the employee, employed by the township, um, brings the approved copy of the minutes to the office as a way of saying it's time to pay me for having taken these minutes. And that's that's Charles Spinal, right? Does that have any new bylaws? Who's the current chair? Fred? Is he still or that is the is, is the chair now. Yeah, I guess yeah. anybody had oh, them. Yeah, where did the bylaws live? If anybody had them, they'd be with Fred. Okay. Fred so or Brian. We have Charlie Swain. Swain. Those I thought, yeah. Charlie Swain Swain thinks Swain. the minutes. No. Got it. Look, proceed. Great. Right. I think Hollister threw us off in that. Okay, sorry. No, 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 no. I, I think very highly of Charles Swainy. I think he may have more than he needs to. He might have more. Swainy. Um, <laughs> certainly, last but certainly not least, um, and I'm not doing this to rake anybody over the cold. I'm doing this to get a, you know, have a, that nice training that Green County provided for us, so and they encouraged us all to get our ducks in a row. So that's the spirit in which I'm doing this. Um, I rewrote the, uh, the pages for the Zoning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals just to, um, oh, let me see, to tell what the commissions do and invite people who yeah. might be interested. This is on the website. It will be as soon as. Um, that, that I've handed it to her. I haven't checked to see if she's put it. It's, it's made it there yet. Me and Chris are buying for time with the website because I'm, um, um, he's doing another project. So if anybody would like to, this came out of my own head and out of the ORC and the um, zoning resolution. I couldn't put every, every single responsibility. I, I kind of massaged it a little. And so if you want to check it out and edit it, if anybody's interested, I have copies. I'd like to see it. And you don't have to get back to me right away. Anybody else? Is this one side easy and the other side don't Yeah, the print's real bad. Sure. Um, <coughs> so, okay, yeah, sure, so I'll go. I'm just in cold and I don't, shouldn't. Is there an action? Um, right here. Thank you. The, um, but you, did you start with our zoning code? Is that, that defines the roles or the rules of, of what, you know, certain, to a certain extent, that defines both of our commissions as well as what the, yeah. the Ohio Revised Code says. <laughs> those, those would be the, the two basic sources. Yeah. Not every every uh, PZ or zoning commission operates exactly Yeah, so I, I, I just did our zoning resolution and um, the ORC. And then I thought, what the heck, as long as we've written it up, why not advertise? just in case, throw some lines out there. Because another thing they've been encouraging us to do is have, um, and I know that you guys have tried met over the years a lot to get people on these committees, but they're encouraging alternates because in case, you know, refusals or vacationers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Or, um, we had a brief period where we had we actually had two alternates on the zoning commission. Oh. We've never had an alternate on the museum in, in my history. Yeah, I don't I, think we ever had, period. I, and I wonder how you keep them because like, they just have to kind of go to meetings and sit and oh, hope someday they get their turn it bad. Or, well, mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, or they can alternates be next in line. Are, it takes are, a while to learn this stuff. Well, next in you, line. RBZA, 
unlike, I mean, there are, there are townships where the BZA meets regularly, okay? In which case, or I'll make a comparison, the one I'm familiar with is, is Yellow Springs, where the, when, you're, when the, the clerk is scheduling the meeting, she'll say to the alternates, we've got um, a quorum, so you don't need to attend. You can if you want to, but you don't need to. But any time that, that she's scheduling a meeting and she can't be sure that she's got a quorum, then the, she makes sure that the alternates are, are coming, or, or tries to make sure that they're coming. It's yeah. just a it's just a, a guarantee of a quorum. Once you you're involved in a case, you stay with it until it's done. And it, it, it usually it's one meeting, and that's all that it takes. I was an alternate for the village BZA for a while, and um, you know went to every meeting, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be voting for the zoning for the zoning commission, for example, with I read if somebody we had a hearing, let's say on a PUD, and one of the zoning commission members was on vacation, that alternate would actually yeah. have an important vote. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Which is why alternates should stay at every meeting to yeah, it, it, that's keep themselves up for speech yeah. and not be excused because they're the form. And they're, yeah, and they're volunteers, so. Yeah. 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 So, so what, I guess what I was saying was, any, could I put that in a letter to the editor or put it in an ad or? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Zoning, zoning commission, zoning commission, more ongoing process and, and they're meeting regularly every month or Ten months of the year, and so the alternates do need to participate in as many meetings as possible. It isn't just to have them when when there's a, a public hearing. But the BCA is meeting to decide a specific issue or issues periodically, and you know, so it's a it's a slightly different format. Anything else? No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to take just a couple of minutes and for myself clear up little threads have been floating around about this, the whole BZA and the, the hearing, and Steve, I'm glad you're here because this specifically refers to, to your last, last hearing, I guess it was your last um, I'm kind of like Forrest Gump. I just like to look at things very simply. The way I see a BZA hearing, it's close to a jury trial. Not exactly, but it's close. On the one hand, you've got a defendant. On the one, the other hand, you've got a prosecutor. The defendant is trying to get something from the prosecutor, as it were, and he has representation with him, and the defendant has representation either through the uh, zoning administrator and or any additional legal people that we have. That's the first point that I had. It, it, it seemed to me, and it's been a while now, Steve, but it seemed to me you had made more than a couple comments that you didn't think Richard was neutral enough or transparent enough or something. I'm not exactly sure what your phraseology was, but am I biased. correct? I said bias. Bias. Okay. Yeah. That's his job to be biased. He works for Miami Township. He represents Miami Township. He works for the zoning. He represents his own. He is the. He but in is our the, particular code, Chris, he has nothing to do with that decision. He's not. He's a, he's his only administrator. Okay, so, at, so he speaks on behalf of you three at the it. hearing. That's all I want to know. He speaks on behalf of you three when he when he's in the media. He, he speaks on through. behalf of you. Yeah, three. he okay. does. He speaks on behalf Fair. of Miami Township and the Miami three. Township zoning, which is all you know, all encompassing. Good. You bring your attorneys. Yep. We have Richard and and the attorneys that there are. Now, one, uh, one, one part that's, that's not 100% clear is because, or not clear for my analogy, is that the jury, we now you know, have had the testimony and the jury, the BZM members, go into a deliberative session. They take their attorney in the deliberative session with them. But they don't take Richard with them. They're, they're not supposed to take Richard with them. Look what he has. In the past, they have. They, in the future, they will not. And in the last meeting, he did not. In the last meeting, he did not. In the future, he will not because 
it could be perceived that he is trying to influence the members of the um, of the BZA to the side of the township. Well, they're supposed to be, you know, weighing both, you know, both sides to that. And what about the briefing notice he supplies to them prior to the meeting? That's perfectly. That he's That's representing. Not no, nope, not at all. No. Do you agree? And again, not? does he review those with you guys first, or is nope. that just no. a, a? So it's point? not accurate to say he represents us. He represents his understanding of the institution of the existing zoning code. Okay, but but, but the, that media, is the media statements are not, I'm sorry. They have nothing to do with the code. The media statements speak to what the township wants and doesn't want, which is you guys. No, the media, the media statements are his personal opinion. Yeah, I yeah. get it. Right. They're not, he speaks in it's the not, they are not, he's not speaking in that particular instance for Miami Township oh, or sure is. for the Chris, the sticking your head in the sand. I'm sorry about this. Nah. He is quoting himself as the Miami Township Zoning Inspector appointed by you three. You, you write your letters to the editor. Who are you speaking for? Nobody, because I'm a citizen. We right. vote he's, for you he's guys. Speaking as a we vote for you guys. You he's appoint speaking. him. He's a paid, he's he's a paid speaking, employee he's, of this town. In the media, he's speaking as a citizen. Wow. Wow. Okay. I think you're way off this. Three wows on yeah, I, think, part. I think you're really well, far off, but okay. Any other <laughs> any other questions, comments before we move on? Because we have other things to discuss. Nope. Um, have astrologer at the meeting tonight. What? There might be something. <laughs> you started by saying you're going to clear something up. I did. What? What did you clear? That he's representing Miami Township. He's representing the zoning uh, commission. He's not meant to be neutral, non-biased. He's meant to be non-biased in his role as zoning inspector. We would be clear about that. When you're coming to him with a request for a permit, the only thing he's supposed to be is non-biased. I mean, he probably should be knowledgeable of the code, but he should be non-biased when you or anyone else comes for a zoning permit. So when, when he gets into the zoning hearing, He's representing the township, the zoning commission. He's representing the commission, the zoning code, and the board of trustees, for that matter. So, if he makes uh, five statements in the media, which is sorry, he makes five statements in the media, and each one of them in the meeting or the me media, uh, media um, Dayton News channels, Yellow Springs News, uh -huh. in the media, public record, yeah. I have a poll of it, and every one of those sort of say um, what damage is being done to neighbors. That, that there's neighbors being harmed by this activity, but he doesn't say anything about the supporting piece of it. Is that is that just is that his prescribed bias that he's supposed to do? Maybe it's just his personal that. opinion. It's his personal opinion. Nothing to do with the township or you guys. Well, right. Nothing to do with the township or for us guys because we do not have a regulation within our system that says the, the zoning administrator or inspector or whatever, uh, ha has a gag order and cannot, you know, cannot participate in in, in any media uh, letter no, writing. I, or, I, I, know, trust that, I trust that. I trust that. And it does not say that we, you know, we have to we have to approve what he what he writes. I, no, maybe we should. But to this point, since we don't have that, we can't say we can't muzzle him. I know nobody said muzzle him. What, what, what I have highly recommended is BZA members and people that work for the township don't make public statements for or against any particular issue. What good does possibly come from that? Now you get into a quasi He's representing the township. Okay. He works for the township. He's representing the township. Okay. You're representing yourself. You're, you're making a case for your side of the argument. He's making a case for his side of the argument. It's going to legally be a problem for you guys. I, I would suggest you go a couple levels deeper in this question. Perhaps we shall. Okay, anything else? Uh, standing committee reports, MERPC. Let's see, they did not meet in July, correct? They did not. Uh, Green County Regional Planning and Working Commission did meet in July. They uh, reviewed the 2040 Long Range Comprehensive Plan, which is out in the Public. Oh, and that's really cool. I, that last what? meeting, no, no, I made a mistake. Just go ahead. Sorry. The 20, 2040 I 2020. That, that last meeting we had those classes, it was all about that. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's pretty, 
don't know if we're still asking for public input. I know they asked us for input. So I'm looking at all the uh, unincorporated places in the, in the county mm -hmm. and uh, visioning for, the, for, for what, what we want to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, I'm surprised I hadn't heard more about it. I'm not sure if we should. Anyway, is there still, is it past the public input part of it? I'll find out tomorrow at 1.30. Okay. I don't know if they've closed it or not. Anyway, interesting. Fifth Union Cemetery. We have not met. Anything going on at the old cemetery that you'd like to bring up? No. Uh, speaking of cemeteries, um, our cemetery restoration folks will be here on the... What's the Monday next? Whatever it is, they're putting, they're going to start their week on the next. In so Green, August Green in the Glen Forest Cemetery. Well, what, what? August 1st? Next Monday, the following Monday, right? Is that you right? Are talking about the next meeting? No, well, the next, next, next Monday. The yeah. next Monday. Next Monday is the 25th. 25th. Yeah, the 25th. Yeah. So how long Sorry. will they be here? Oh, it's five days. Five. So this is repairing headstones and such. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, repairing, okay. staying back old part, up. The old part of I thought you were talking about natural burial, but no. Mm -hmm. Huh. But they're not doing any training. No. Okay. So there, there are ongoing things for established cemeteries. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Yellow Springs Development Corporation? Yes. Uh, at the last meeting, there was a, pro a proposal to initiate a sort of community visioning uh, where we would retain is this uh, here in this <coughs> we would retain a consultant try to get grants uh, for a Community visioning that would uh, sort of address listening to different parts of the community. Um, I don't know how what, what will happen with this, but uh, um, Jay Rothman made a presentation uh, along the lines of doing that. See where it goes. Uh, the purpose of which would be. Similar to if village council was doing visioning for a comprehensive plan or something, uh, like a or if plan. we were doing a township visioning, uh, and YSDC is suggesting that they might take on that kind of role. I, it's just a very, it's a beginning initiative. Uh, their focus would be economic development. Uh, Again, I don't know where it's going, but it, uh, not intentionally, I think, but it fits with the current frustration of the school board over our uh, putting, you know, agreeing to, or putting on the ballot a tax levy that they didn't know about. Uh, and Although YSDC has, we have a tax committee, we maybe four months ago first started circulating a tax calendar when current levies uh, would come up for renewal or would expire. Uh, it's not that it's been dead air, but we haven't, uh, and this is an example, we haven't gotten to the stage of sort of collaborative partnership talking about our finances. So, I don't know if everyone has seen the letter from uh, T.J. Turner, the president of the school board. Uh, they voice frustration that this process of, through YSDC hadn't gotten to the specifics of our plans. Uh, and they propose specifically, and I'd like to read this and get reaction. Uh, 
I suggest we hold a public meeting where each organization can outline their financial needs and upcoming plans and begin this important conversation with our electorate. And this important conversation, the context is a couple paragraphs of what YSDC vision was that, that one of the effects of having YSDC is a closer communication. Uh, there have been, there's been one meeting with myself, the school superintendent and village manager and the school treasurer going over uh, tax dates uh, when current levies would uh, expire, and we and we talked about the township having plunged ahead on uh, I'm using not my phrase but others' phrase uh, on the levy. <coughs> uh, I met this morning with treasurer of the school board, uh, working on a more detailed memorandum and a series of questions for clarification from the county auditor about some of the Yellow Springs tax situations. And Wednesday we're meeting with the county auditor. Um, what uh, the school board is suggesting is a much more ambitious thing. Uh, that is, the and I don't think just by planning a public meeting that would be very successful. There would be a process of building up to this. So I'm willing to take that on, but the trustees should say this is, we want to take part in this. And this would be a huge shift in communication. That would be some assumption, although legally this wouldn't be binding at all, some assumption that we would share our uh, plans and decision making over uh, levies and how much and which and there were lots of different kinds of levies and there's also income tax uh, which we don't have the option for but the school and the village does uh, I can keep talking but let me hold off Carolyn, what do you think? Well, I've had calls this week too um, from the school board member, the school teacher, Ken Flynn. I um, saw the letter. I like the spirit of it. I, I, I'm trying to imagine a public meeting where we're talking about how oh, three different public ent entities need money badly um, and how we could possibly. I'm not. I like the spirit of it, but I'm um, trying to imagine having general public say, okay, well, I, I'm going to add this much to my tax bill this year for you guys, and then two years later, the school's going to come out and we're going to do this, and then and have any, walk away with any sense of where, that, where the individual citizen really understands the impact of the taxes or, or a, a room full of individual Yellow Springs and Miami Township citizens walking out say, okay, that sounds good. Um, or have any, these buddies having any way of saying to Miami Township, well, couldn't, couldn't you cut your fire budget by $8,000? Or us telling them with their facilities budget, um, you want to shave off a couple million off that? I, I, I like it. I'm, I'd, I'd like to hear more ideas of how this, this might be accomplished. So, but the I, goal I did, is, is better communication. Better communication. Um, um, but I did. I heard that there. Um, Judith said some things. I won't mention any names, but you know, thinking outside the box on some of these things, like how about the first fifty thousand of appraisal isn't taxed for um, yeah, for everybody to change state law for that. Oh, which, we, which yeah. doesn't mean you couldn't do it. Oh, um, okay. but. The, the direction that we've been heading so far within YSDC is communication between administrators of the village and the schools, and then myself representing the township, 
Uh, it's not me talking to council members or school board members about this. No, no reason not to, but our working group is that small group. Uh, and it's focused on when are taxes pending, or when is current levies expiring, and the idea would be to avoid uh, putting in requests simultaneously. It's not then what's your economic projection and uh, you know, how fast are we heading towards the cliff. So I think when he asks us if we would, I don't know if he asks us to initiate a public meeting or take part in a public meet open to the public. And, um, and then Judith went so far as to ask if we would initiate a public meeting tonight. And I, I just, I don't know what I'm at. I don't know what I'd be presenting to the public uh, or asking. I, I think public. that uh, we have a levy on the ballot. I think it's to our benefit to have informational meetings. That's not exactly what is being requested here. But the point is, to, my interpretation is not to point. The positive effect could be we start to change our habits. Our habits have been to operate in separate silos. I'm not sure. Boy, it's hard to see that crossover, but I'm yeah, and, and, and you know, new people get elected with totally different priorities. Uh, may not, may not persist, but I don't, and I don't want to plunge ahead of you guys. Don't say yeah, that's good idea. I'm all for opening communication with the other entities. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not willing public, to say that we're going. If we're organizing or sponsoring or initiating at, at their request a public meeting, that's not a trivial thing. Yeah. It also, also seems as though by agreeing to the public meeting, you are in effect agreeing to the goals that public meeting is being formed for. Or somehow, what's the goal? One entity being able to, it, it, it could, you know, make some sort of push in one direction or another of another entity's tax requirements. I just can't envision how that would happen. Not to mention, this is. Oh, for our particular case, this is one tax levy that we all hope will pass, and and that's it for heaven knows how many more years. I mean, uh, we're not we going to have things. Have, we have a renewal in two years. Yes, but it will be a pretty much straight renewal. There, there's no additional million dollars to it, uh, and if, if people can't. I think you might consider the whether A, it's an issue about what people can afford. If they're starting to vote on their pocketbook rather than what they want to have. If, if we've crossed that line. I don't know if we have or not. The, the second one is it's just the psychology of the timing. If everybody puts, has a levy at the same time or there's a levy every year it's sometimes harder for people to keep voting for them rather than, oh, once here, now it's been a couple of years since we've had any increases in our tax bill, and now we're willing to vote for this. And I, I don't know exactly how that works, but I, I hear people talking, well, we just, you know, we just voted for a new township building, and we just, you know, had our, our, all our utility bills double, and we just, you know, and, and then, oh, it's the school's turn, and people say no. And I think you really nailed it. That's what they're trying to uh, trying to trying avoid to being whoever's last in line. If that's the way you think of it. Mm -hmm. oh. 
I mean, that's basically what happened to them, I think, the last election, that people, you know, they voted with their pocketbook. They may not have had the, the, the type of incentive to vote positive that, that uh, well, obviously they didn't because it, it failed, but, uh, you know, it was, I mean, it was put before the people and the people voted on it, and that was, was that last year or the year before? Last year. Last year. Last year. Last year. Oh, my, my point is not to, to uh, debrief about recent elections, but what kind of communication uh, would be worthwhile, and what do you want me to do? I don't, I don't want to proceed on my own and end up realizing I'm out on the diving board without any support. Take your copy of the fire department end of year statement, mm -hmm. I mean, which Margaret has sent to the president of the school board, so he's already got. And it's kind of hard to argue with a number that huge that. We're not arguing whether the levy should pass or not. In fact, there's a lot of support for us. We want to do, as I interpret, school board's request, it's or recommendation or urging, suggestion I guess is the phrase, public meeting where each organization, I would say each jurisdiction, can outline their financial needs and upcoming plans and begin this important conversation. Well, in effect it ends it. I mean, we put this out, I mean, it's on the ballot. Well, but what's happening in two years and in five years and uh, and not with specific answers, but with a picture. This is the trend. This is, uh, you know, if we don't do something different, this, this is what might happen. I, I, would, I would participate in that. I mean, not to de derail this play, but to, they're, they're just being sensitive to people are feeling overwhelmed financially and everywhere. And all of their other costs have gone up, and we have some dire needs for the fire department, really dire needs for the school, and I'm sure the village too. So I think the conversation would be healthy. If, if nothing else, to help the public understand, help them understand. Depending, of course, on how well and, it's done. Yeah, and um, I mean, then there's also talk of justifying, you know, did you do your due diligence in, in the numbers you're coming up with? asking the public for, you know. They have the right to know, you know, do, 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 we, do we need, you know, I won't put, throw any numbers out there, but, you know, have you tightened your belt? Have you looked at it different ways? Have you thought about it, the box, that kind of thing, so. Um, I, I think they're inviting us to the process and I, I, I would participate. I'm sure I would organize it. I would assist. Now, I don't need a motion on this, I just want uh, your comments as my colleagues on this. We're going to have a joint public meeting with the Village Council, the Yellow Spring School Board, and the Township Trustees. To outline That's what, there's what our needs are. And <laughs> you should have a legal opinion on that before you make a decision. Anybody else have an opinion? Insight? I think what uh, Danny is saying is, is true. We, we should be uh, advised by, you know, we're, we're not planning to accomplish business, but we're going to, we're not planning to make decisions, but we will be sharing information nevertheless. Definitely be a public meeting. Well, I, it occurs to me, having spent lots of time with all of these bodies in one form or another, for the body to to figure out the presentation that they're going to make about what what money they need in the future or <coughs> don't need in the future, how much they're tightening their belts or not tightening their belts. That's a major undertaking before you even see the public. I wouldn't go into that meeting not having. This would know. be a major process. Now, 
the schools have been doing this and been publicizing it. We've done a lot of it. We've done a lot of publicizing the last few years in the village. Um, I will say on the, not the projections for the future, but on the sort of combing over uh, the taxes, the current taxes, uh, the school treasurer has been really helpful. And to our county auditors. That's good. I mean, our needs are just so simple compared to the villages and mm -hmm. the school boards. I mean, we need to pay EMTs and firefighters. That's all. That's all we want to do. This is we, on, this, on this levy. Yeah, our, on this our, levy. our budget has like five other. But we have nothing on, we have no levies that are supporting that. That's right. So we, we do levies. have road levy, but we're not, they're no, not they, up for election. Yeah, for both. that's a continue. So, uh, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but in this particular, I think, menu, you know, this is all we have is to keep somebody driving an ambulance. Well, okay. Um, maybe we should think about it or mm -hmm. something or I, I mean yeah uh, at the I'm, next meeting I'll give you more detailed uh, reflections after talking to council and school board that'd be great that'd really be great anything else at the YSDC in general no any other questions uh, the last one's Grinnell Mill and I just want to let everybody know uh, we do not operate Grinnell Mill anymore. Uh, that's now operated by Glen Helm. That's been signed, sealed, yeah. and delivered. I'm looking, there's a whole lot about the Grinnell Mill on the website. Um, it stays, it goes, the history's good, um, mm. and there's a place where you can reserve. Yeah, that's all going to go. That's all going to go. Um, yeah. I, would you like me to get all of it? Or maybe not? Well, that's their website. That's Grinnell Mill's website. It's not my attempt. Or, wait a minute. Uh, my attention has history. There's a history. Is there a reserve button, you know? Is there a reserve button? Unless it's like, I'll look. It, okay, it's and there's a link to a really good know. video. Yeah. That's what we're going to know going through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great video. Reason like Okay, okay. Uh, new business this evening? Mm -hmm. business this evening? I did forget one thing, if I could just toss this in under here. This only, the Christmas doesn't affect you, which is awesome. But it affects you guys. Okay. Um, so we can leave. Oh, we we have forgot. Well, I have um, after after September 11th, and part of the the training requirements that came out under that is the federal government through EMA mandated a lot of us having to have a lot of training. Um, there is a training that you guys have to have, um, and we missed you the first time just because we didn't catch it because it's been so long since we changed it before. Um, so I'm going to send you a link that is to what is called NIMS training, which is National Emergency Management, or the National Incident Management System. Okay. Failure to do this means that if we have a FEMA declared disaster, the township will not get it. So there's T2. Okay. Um, so I will send you that. It's just an online thing. I think it takes maybe an hour and a half okay. to do. It's somewhat painful, but... <laughs> It is what it is, but it does, it has to be. So like you see on the, if you look on the black cabinet in there, you'll see a certificate like a Chris's that actually mentions this, this name's course. So okay. I'll send you guys that. Where you said That's a certificate. I got it. National Institute of what? National Incident, Incident Management. Oh, Incident Management. Yeah, that's pretty seriously, but uh, an emergency meeting that it's mostly for, for elected officials, it's more of an awareness level of how do all the things come into play so that you make sure that, for example, the, you guys are aware of what the fire department's responsibilities are for documentation and researching disasters so that that benefits the township to the best. 
where ours are more how to do the tactical aspects of it and that kind of thing. So. Marilyn, you had something else? Yeah. It's not been a heavy enough meeting yet, but um, you're going really fast on the Oak Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And last time you read it, so okay, come on, we're going to do some prices tonight. And I, and I was kind of blown away by it, um, just because you've been working very diligently by yourself, and then suddenly we can't be experts on prices and things. And then I see all the stuff you're building, the website, and I feel like you're about to start selling plots there. And I don't feel no. comfortable with that yet. And I, I, I wanted to make sure that before we open that up, that that we need the, the vote of this body to proceed. We voted to proceed with the establishment of that cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. And that was when would, would we vote on pricing? Would, would, would we vote to start start opening up and No, we voted to, to put it together. And once it's together, then it's and public. So there's no final vetting of like, okay, I'm on board, yeah, this looks good, that looks good. I mean, you're certainly welcome to add whatever you'd like to add, but I don't see us. I don't see us changing the basic parameters of the of the of the design at this point. I mean, it's it's been vetted, it's been surveyed, it's, it's been, been laid been, out. It's been vetted by us, us, us on the board. We chatted about this. I, you you presented for the first time a few weeks ago what your plan was. Perhaps first time for me, for you. Um, and um, but I don't remember the details from before. But you may, you may well have done that. And um, which which board approved it? I'm not I'm not trying to check you. I'm not I'm I'd have to look at the minutes and see which which board. And so from the from the moment we said yeah, go ahead with an open of cemetery. There's no no approval beyond that. Uh, I I guess what took me back was finding out from Dan that we were digging a well and putting a $7,200 well in pump. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't it wasn't approved by us. I'm in support of it. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to get to use it too in the prairie. Mm -hmm. But what is what are the rules? We, you talk, I talked to you about this on, on the weekend and you said that many townships Nickel and dime all the time. Every time they go to Kinko's, they they're approving some kind of expenditure, and that's not your philosophy. That that we we all have to have an opinion about every single purchase that gets made. But digging a well for the first time in the cemetery it seemed like one that should have done to all of us. Well, just for historical pre pre uh, preference, perspective. perspective. When we took over uh, by law, we had to take over the Glen Forest Cemetery. Uh, we decided um, that we were under the impression there were very few open graves in the older side. We found out later uh, that was incorrect. Um, and I can go into that. But we decided to open the Glen Forest East on the other side of the road. And I took that. Uh, project on, and I spent about $130,000 with, with with zero approval from the boards. Uh, I mean, I, I needed to have all the roads regraded and, and and stoned and foundation put down, and called somebody up and had that done. I uh, had all, all the grass put in, and we had all the shrubs put in, and I had somebody I called somebody up and I had all that done. And, and I had the, 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 the all the fencing, and the big thing that says Glen Forest Cemetery. I went to a to a metal shop, and I designed the the sign, and, and they put it together. And then I had the stone masons make those columns that had all the uh, that cost about fifty five thousand dollars. I just spent that because that was my project. And um, they, there was another one across the street. We decided to put one at the at the old. Cemetery, and that was uh, another fifteen thousand dollars. And then the natural burial cemetery. I proposed that natural burial cemetery, and the board agreed that that was a good idea. And I personally spent 
not personally, but I spent every dime of putting together the natural burial cemetery of all the, the design, the, the, the surveying. I, I didn't have to have the surveyors. I didn't have to have uh, uh, competing bids for the surveyors. I just went out and found a surveyor and, and, and had it done. And, and then we had, uh, Dan and I went out and, and rented a planter and, and I ordered all the seed from a place in Indianapolis and, and, and gave Margaret the invoice and, and all of that was paid for. Um, a seventy-two hundred dollar well is not that much, and that's the same way that I've been working with the Oak Grove. Is I had an idea to to put this forth to the to the best use of that that back lot. Um, I don't know if you were here, but I the the back lot, the six acres in the back, was not owned by Miami Township. Was not owned by the Glen. Forest Association at the time, uh, but the village of Yellow Springs had a um, had a um, commitment letter or something to that effect that for a dollar they would transfer that back six acres for ten years. Well, that that ran out about five years ago, and so I went to the village and I negotiated to to have that reinstated, and so we could have that property for ourselves for, for another use for our cemetery. For the dollar, and we, I had our attorney write everything up to, so it was all legal, and, and I had it, I had it surveyed again, and I paid for that, and I, mean, I didn't pay for it, but Marty paid for it, but I had it all done, and then I had this idea about the Oak Grove Cemetery, and I presented it to the board at some time. The board thought it was a, a good idea, and so I've been proceeding with it, saying why I proceeded the, with the all the other. The board approved the design. Or not the design, the concept. The concept, the concept. Yes. concept. Mm -hmm. And so the same way the concept, concept the same way the concept was for the National Bureau Center, same way the concept was for Glen Forest East and and, and and other things like the software for the for the for the Pondon software. That was all my idea. I, I did all the research, I did all the uh, the investigation for it. Uh, I put every single piece of data in it. Um, I've surveyed every person on a piece of on a piece of paper, and those papers are in the back on a tablet. I went to every stone, every headstone in every cemetery that we own, and, and wrote down who was who was actually physically there, and and, and then put it in the uh, cross-checked it and put it in the put it in the software. Um, you know, I, I didn't have three uh, three bids on cemetery software. I just picked the one that I thought was the best and gave Margaret the bill and. Off we went, and I put all the data in. I, I did all the work. Uh, I mean, I didn't have I any think pushback on that. The kinds of things, uh, what you've been doing, the vision, the, you know, is, is great. Thank you. The question is, when does the when does an expenditure need to be authorized? I mean, I do recall well with definitely voting, voting ahead, on the. Uh, software and we, what we pay a, a service fee monthly uh, for the sort of genealogical connection to the uh, specific plots. Um, again, the question is when do we need to vote on it? Okay, sure. that's fair enough. And I would say when we need to vote on it is when we don't have the money in the cemetery fund to spend for cemetery purposes. And keep in mind, virtually every dime that's in that cemetery fund came from the Natural Burial Cemetery or the or Glen Forest East. You know, there's been very few burials in the old park, and there's been very few new graves sold in the old park. Very few. I I don't know about you, Margaret, but do you remember the last new grave that was sold in the old park? I think there was. One. Okay. Well, the um, maybe the ninety eight thousand dollars, yeah, the ninety eight thousand dollars that's in that account, yeah, right. Not no, come from virtually... one from the old old park. Right. It, it pretty much all came from work that was the result of what I did. So you mean you know, right from the burials in lots in, 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 yeah, in, in the big picture. So when I accept and when I spend all that money, then if I had to go to the general fund, Marilyn, can I spend a couple of bucks here? Water faucet, but in the big picture, uh, 
I'm not saying that you've done anything wrong. Who is liable, and I don't necessarily mean legally, but for the overall expenditures of the sanitary? No. Is it the trustees? I mean, it is. Yes, it is the trustees, of course. And, and so we, we have the practice has been to delegate that to you. Because, yes, it, the practice has been to del delegate to me because I'm the one who thought it up, I'm the one who put it out on the table, and I'm the one who got the approval from the rest of the board. Anything that you want to do, anything that you want to do, Marilyn, you pick it up, you bring it to the table, you get it approved, and we're not going to micromanage it. If, if there's something that you want to, some project you want to work on, I mean, Don wanted to work on the, the, the um, detention swale and put in little critters, or whatever those things were. Still pending. It's still pending. And, you know, we agree. And we gave them a, 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 you know, a kind of a blank check up to a certain point just because it, it, it didn't come from a fund that had a cap. I mean, had, it, had he had a, uh, a floor and fauna fund that was, you know, fifty thousand dollars, and he wanted to spend it. I, I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't going to say, okay, you can't spend. You can only spend fifteen thousand on on this flower and five thousand on this flower, and a you know, hundred for a tree, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, that's the project you want to do. Here's the money. Go out and spend it and do it. It's just the same thing for you. You have that. For the curtain. You have that perfect ability. Yeah, yeah. And I, you say, for, I thought you were going to say it for the curtain. Um, thank you for all your work you've done. <laughs> you don't have to thank me. That's just, it's part of the job. Know, That's what I was elected to do. So, I just have to say it. Your plan, and it's beautiful, your plan for this consists of one page. It has 70 trees, 70 swamp white oak trees mm -hmm. on five acres. 5.6. And I, we've gone back and forth. I said, well, you know, is it good to do monocultural? If a poor bug comes and you say, oh, we'll just plant new trees if we get Well, we'll fix it. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, and are we going to be able to bury all those people once the big tree roots come and you're like, oh, yeah, do ashes? And like, you, you have, and you, it's great. You probably, <laughs> or you have the attitude of, yeah. There's a thousand. Let's graves. invent a cemetery and put it in, and that if anything comes up, we'll, we'll do it. Clearly, there's a thousand graves available. If you need to take out 20 graves to, to concern yourself about the roots, that's fine with me. Okay. That leaves you 980 graves left. 980 graves is going to last quite a while. Um, anyway, I, I'm just going to say you may be in the shop until you're 100, but. <laughs> If you're not, uh, no. who, there's going to be people left managing this, and mm -hmm. so more of a vetting. Can we run it by somebody, a landscape architect, say, yeah, how would this work? Or I, I mean, it has you said it's been vetted. I, I'm I sure mean, it might among, be among us, I, among I, us. I, you know, I, I know of no other place that has done this. I mean, I, I, I keep my eyes and ears open for cemetery designs, mm -hmm. and and around that, I go to all the different. You know seminars that I can, um, which haven't had too many in the past because of of, of the uh, pandemic. But you know, I, I've just not heard of this design. It's more, I think, it's a unique design, and I think, and I have had extreme support. I mean, from absolutely everyone who knows about this, they think it's a wonderful idea, and. And I've got a hard out at seven o'clock. All right. So okay. Yeah. I, 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 leave, I, I can leave the know. meeting to you guys I, if you want to. I'm good. I entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Okay. I second. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.